Hey, how's it going everyone? Eddie Martinez here with the Recording Radio and Film Connection and welcome back to another sound design lesson in Logic Pro X. Let's go ahead and begin. Now, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is go ahead and jump to our instrument rack right here and select the ES2 synthesizer and then stereo. Cool. So of course right now we're looking at our ES2 synthesizer and we have our default factory setting right now. Let's go ahead and go to our tutorial settings. We'll go all the way up to analog saw three oscillator. That simply means that uh, it's gonna be an analog saw, saw waveforms and uh, three oscillators. These three oscillators are now on and the blend is somewhere towards the middle. Cool, let's go ahead and hear what it sounds like. So it sounds pretty nice, but I think it sounds a little bit thin and I wanna make this sound a little bit bigger uh, to give us a more pad sound effect and something that's gonna make it sound just a little bit cooler than just this very basic analog saw. So let's go ahead and get started on that. Uh, for our global parameters, we're gonna wanna pretty much leave them as is. We might tweak the analog just a little bit as we start dialing, dialing in our uh, oscillators right here. So first thing we're gonna wanna do is uh, go to our first oscillator, to our tuning uh, knob right here, and move this down a couple uh, semitones, maybe about five. Nice. We're gonna go ahead and go to our oscillator number two and do the same. We're gonna move this uh, down five semitones. So we're sounding a little bit different already. Now we're gonna go ahead and make the sound a little bit bigger. And we're gonna do that by uh, going to our oscillator at number three and go to, going to our tuning section right here and going down one full octave. So that's gonna be 12 semitones. Let's go ahead and hear what it sounds like. Now we can go ahead and start playing around with our analog a little bit. I think right here about uh, 0 0.131 seems nice enough. Very cool. Next, we're gonna go ahead and uh, play with our unison a little bit. Uh, we're simply gonna go ahead and click this and it's gonna change our voices down to five. But what it will do when it does that, it's gonna go ahead and make our sound a little bit bigger in the stereo space. So let's go ahead and hear what it sounds like right now. I'm gonna go ahead and hit unison right now. So uh, yeah, it sounds a lot bigger. Let's go ahead and hear what it sounds like without it. And now with it, as you can tell, our voice has changed from 10 to five. But you know what, I like it better that way. It sounds a little bit bigger and a little bit nicer. Uh, next, what we can go ahead and do to make this sound even bigger uh, is add some sine wave to it. So let's go ahead and do that. About there is fine. I mean, we don't wanna overload it too much. So it sounds, I think it sounds great already. So uh, now we are around a little bit more than halfway done. We're gonna play around a little bit with our effects and then go down to our envelope and then we're through. So let's go ahead and jump to our effects and we're gonna go ahead and make sure that we have our chorus selected and we're just gonna up the intensity. Awesome, I like, actually really like it right there. And you can go ahead and feel free to be a little bit liberal with the X, Y pad. Uh, for right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it at it, as is. Cool. So let's go ahead and play a chord, hear what that sounds like. I actually like that a lot better than the original sound. Now, the very last thing we're gonna do is play a little bit with our decay and our release, and we're through. And then we'll, we'll go ahead and hear what it sounds like in context with other instruments. Okay, that sounds fine to me. I'm gonna bring this up and down and see what I like better. So right here we get kind of shorter notes, it's more staccato. This one's a little bit more legato sounding. A little bit more sustained sounding. The release happens a lot later. Kind of has a little trailing effect, which I actually do like. That should be fine, around 440 milliseconds. Cool. 
Now what I'll do is I'll hit play. We'll hear what it sounds like in context and maybe uh, with other instruments, of course, and bring down our volume and see how it fits in our mix. Alright guys, so that's how you make a pretty cool sounding pad synth sound in Logic Pro X with your growing knowledge of sound design. Of course, if you like the video, leave your comments and thoughts down below. You can always subscribe to the channel or like the video itself. But one of the best things you can do is check out our website, www.recordingconnection.com to learn all about the school and what we're doing with one-on-one -on -one training. We'll actually stick you inside a real recording studio with a professional engineer who will show you the ropes and show you everything that you need to know, get you certified, and help you get a job in the recording engineering field. So uh, again, Eddie Martinez here with the Recording Connection, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace. Ooh.